Two bays on the Great Lakes show us examples of former shorelines formed as glaciers receded and lake levels slowly dropped. These examples are at Michaels Bay on Lake Huron's Manitoulin Island and Bay Degree on Lake Superior's Keweenaw Peninsula. We start on Lake Huron's Manitoulin Island, the largest freshwater island in the world, at Michaels Bay. Study this next overhead for a moment, where you will see nearly 50 remnant shorelines. This shoreline was recently reclaimed by Judith Jones and crew after having been completely overgrown with invasive Phragmites, a tall foreign grass that quickly takes over wet areas, probably brought in by four-wheelers. The narrow sandy beach was newly formed in 2018-19 after the invasive grass was removed over three years of work. Inland from the sand beach and current shoreline at Michaels Bay, there is a repeating series of narrow fens and small dry sandy ridges. These ridges are remnants of former shorelines left behind as lake levels decreased and the shoreline receded over the last 11,000 years after the glaciers melted. The relatively young trees of mostly uniform height on these ridges may reflect fire or logging in the last century. You see eastern white pine, northern white cedar, balsam fir, black spruce, paper birch, and aspen on the sandy ridges. We fly over more than a dozen older shorelines, which continue another mile into the distance, totaling perhaps 50 or more distinct ridges of former shorelines. The ridges are from a half a meter to as much as three meters in height, and are relatively dry sandy soils formed from coarse sands deposited over hundreds of years from limestone and dolomite pavement outcrops around Michaels Bay. The narrow fens between the ridges are extremely species rich, filled with orchids, carnivorous plants like sundews and pitcher plants, and a great diversity of sedges. Other species include sphagnum moss, buckbean, beak rush, St. John's wort, and rose pagonia, in addition to shrubs like leatherleaf, bog rosemary, sweet gale, and large and small cranberry. Looking out to the mouth of Michaels Bay, we see this shoreline is protected from storms from nearly all directions except southwest. Looking down on seven or eight older shorelines closest to the beach, we can see some of the rich plant diversity in the fens and more detail on the ridges. While each ridge of trees looks like it may be one older shoreline, a closer look reveals many of these ridges may have additional older shorelines or old storm beaches within them. The drone gives us a clear view of the fens and ridges as we fly toward the beach. Variations in ridge width and shape help us see that storm beaches and multiple shorelines are what shape these ridges and fens. Some of the fens are quite flooded. We see many former shorelines with small trees as we get closer to the bay. As we approach the beach, you will see dry grassy openings along the edge of the trees just inland of the quad trail that contain hill's thistle, a threatened species found in prairies, alvars, and dunes. It is this quad trail that brings invasive species onto the beach. Thirty years ago, this shoreline had low sandy dunes, but in nature, things are always changing, especially on Great Lakes shores. We move to Lake Superior's historic but surprisingly unknown Keweenaw Peninsula, the source for nearly all copper used to electrify America. Here we find Bay Degree, as the locals pronounce it, another example of former shorelines. We start on the beach at Bay Degree on a very calm day where driftwood is washed up like old bleach bones. Remnant tufts of dune grasses show that this may once have been a larger dune complex before it was stabilized enough 
for other plants to get established. The forest behind the present beach indicates some stability over the recent past, as the alternating wetland swales and levees of old shorelines are less pronounced and harder to see. This forest is dominated by eastern white pine, white spruce, balsam fir, and tamarack, with some poplar or paper and yellow birch mixed in. Pedigree has been recognized as the single most important coastal wetlands complex in the upper Great Lakes region. It contains more than 300 species of plants, including lady slipper orchids and carnivorous plants like sundews, pitcher plants, and bladderworts. There is also a high diversity of grasses and sedges here. The more uniform forest we saw behind the beach eventually gives way to the pattern we now see of former shorelines formed as the level of Lake Superior decreased and the shoreline receded over thousands of years, leaving a distinctive pattern of dry sand levees and tree lines separated by swales or fens. The species-rich fens are dominated by sedges and grasses, along with many herbaceous plants like blue flag iris and shrubs like leatherleaf. The levees, in addition to trees, have trailing arbutus, bunchberry, or Canada dogwood, bracken fern, blueberries, common juniper, and Labrador tea on the sandy, well-drained soil. Rare species of concern present at Beta Gris include alternate flowered water milfoil, oracle twayblade, an orchid, and fairy slipper, another orchid. You may also see less obvious ridges from old storm beaches within this mix of levees and fens as we get closer to the beach. There are different types of sand around the Great Lakes depending on the rocks the sand is weathered from and how it was deposited. Sand formed from granite rock is more acidic than sand that has particles of limestone and silica in it. This influences what types of vegetation can grow on the beach. Special thanks to Judith Jones on Manitoulin Island and Carol Reschke at the University of Minnesota for sharing their knowledge of these two unique landscapes.